We all start somewhere. For me, I started with a GoPro back in 2015 and slowly but surely upgrading my fleet throughout the years. But you probably heard the tax code states that you can only deduct camera gear for your business in the same year you made the purchase. Well, good news for you, this isn't true. Because what if it was made in the past? Let me unlock the tax superpower of converting old camera gear to business. Check this out. This Sony RX100 Mark V that I bought back in 2016 is still worth $275 used today. And my GoPro Hero 6, well, clearly in bad condition. It has 476. Oh. <laughs> but if it was in better shape, it'd be worth 150 bucks and I got this back in 2017. And incredibly, this GoPro session that I got in 2015 is still worth 150 bucks. So why is this important? Well, you're likely in two camps, either A, you're thinking about launching your own creative business someday, or B, you're already in the business. But what I know for certain is that you purchase camera gear before ever deciding to pursue a life in the creative business space. So what I'll make very clear is that the understanding to utilize this tax loophole can possibly net you thousands of dollars in tax savings literally right now. And you could possibly use that money to help pay for your next camera gear upgrade, maybe a new lens or even a new gimbal. Hold up. So because I have old camera gear, that will allow me to buy new camera gear? Yes. That's right, the tax code is gonna get you some new gear. But back to that camera purchase. Like most people, the idea of assuming a tax advantage from your first camera purchase probably didn't cross your mind and you probably didn't get help from your tax guy either. Apparently, I can deduct camera gear purchases that I bought before my business started. Unfortunately, that is correct, sir. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, that's tax strategy. What the Thankfully, you can still take the camera gear purchase as a business expense, even though you purchased it long ago. For starters, the tax quote won't allow you to deduct the original price you paid for it because clearly it's lost its value over the years. The RX100 Mark V was originally a thousand bucks and the GoPro Hero 6 was originally 400 bucks. But instead of using the price that we paid for it in the past, what we're gonna use is called the fair market value. What is the fair market value? Well, the fair market value is a price that someone in the open market would reasonably pay for the item that you're selling. The open market in this case can be defined as Craigslist or eBay. The tax code states that you can write off either the cost basis, the price that you paid for the gear, or the fair market value, whichever is lower. So unless you have vintage equipment that is more valuable and worth more today, then let's assume that you will always use the fair market value moving forward. So clearly now you're intrigued because you're estimating in your head how much money you spent on camera gear that you didn't write off on your taxes. This is really good, but there's work to be done to make sure that it is foolproof. So let me explain how to do it. Step one, identify all the camera gear that you have not claimed on your taxes that you currently still have and you still use in your business. If you don't use the equipment in your business now, then typically it doesn't count, but I have another loophole. Go out on a few shoots, use the piece of equipment, problem solved. Now, step two, go on eBay or Craigslist and search for each piece of gear listed on the marketplace. Filter by used and sold and find at least five to 10 items and save each web page as a PDF for record keeping. Having five to 10 items conveys a solid argument to the IRS of the fair market value. If your gear is very rare or old, at least one sold listing will suffice in this circumstance. If you can't find the sold listing, then you can take a just active listing instead. But just know that's not rock solid evidence unless we have a sold listing. If there are no listings in general, then you're gonna to have to locate another used marketplace like a forum to justify the fair market value. Step three, average the amounts of each listing. This is your fair market value. I did this exercise for my GoPro Hero 6. I found six used and sold listings from June 2021. The total average fair market value was $158.50. 
Step four, the code won't allow you to write off the full value on your tax return. Instead, since it's a loophole, aka superpower, we will need to depreciate the item. Depreciating means deducting the value of the camera gear over time, since typically you will use the equipment for multiple years. For camera gear, the duration is set at five years, so you will split the deduction evenly over five years. Step five, finally give this information to your tax professional like myself, so that way they can report it on your taxes. What's the true impact? For example, let's say you quantified roughly $10,000 worth of used equipment. This might include a few camera bodies, lenses, tripods, and gimbals. If your tax bracket is 30% and I'm being conservative, then you'd be on pace to save $3,000 in taxes. You could almost purchase a brand new Sony A7S III. Again, the only caveat here is that you have to depreciate the camera gear. So the tax code will force you to take it over five years. In this case, 10,000 divided by five is a $2,000 deduction every single year. Multiplied by 30% is $600 of tax savings per year. So admittedly, maybe not an A7S III today, but maybe a new gimbal, maybe a new lens. Of course, your actual savings will depend on two things, the fair market value of your gear and your current tax rate. Of course, your mileage may vary but since camera gear is extremely expensive, a majority of you will be able to find significant savings by using this loophole. What else? Well, camera gear isn't the only thing this works on. Laptops, electronics, furniture, any large high cost assets would qualify. But unfortunately, anything subscription based like Lightroom, Photoshop, and After Effects will not work and all the costs associated with using those softwares in the past will be some costs. And again, before using any of these tips, make sure to contact your own tax advisor before using these strategies in real life. If you want any more business and tax tips, please make sure to do all the fancy algorithm YouTube stuff. Hit that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell. And remember, business is like a movie. Peace.